Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. In this episode of Luminar 2018 Tips and Tricks, we're going to take a look at the black and white conversion filter. Now, you could add the black and white conversion filter anywhere along your workflow, but most of us do like to do it relatively early in our workflow. And towards the end of this video, I'm actually going to show you my exact workflow for a black and white image. But to begin this demonstration, I'm just going to open up the black and white conversion filter right away. And you can see when I do that, it immediately turns the image into a monochrome picture. And we could start adjusting it. Now I'm going to close down the filters catalog to give us a little more room. Now right off the top, you can see that there's these little color circles. And to better explain those, I really have to jump down and explain what these six color sliders are. Now, I'm going to turn the filter off for a minute, and when it kicks in, you'll see the color image. And obviously, very obviously, we have some blue in the sky. We have some greens and yellows in the grasses. All right. When I turn this back on, and it kicks back in, you'll notice that we have a yellow, green, blue sliders, and we're on the luminance tab. If I take this blue slider and I move it to the left, you'll notice that the sky is getting darker. What we're doing is we're taking any blue that was in the original color image and we're bringing the luminance down. So we're making the blues darker. If I move it to the right, we're making those blues lighter. So we're affecting luminance values of the colors that are in the original image. So you could really make your image pop by affecting the original colors in this, in this way. We'll take blue down, we could push yellow up, push green up, make the grass kind of brighter. Now, there's not a lot of other colors in this specific image, but if there were reds, we would move here with the red slider. And you can see it is affecting these grasses over here in the right as I move that. So we could change that. that. Um, Magenta, there's probably no magenta in here at all, and I don't see anything happening with that. Cyan will probably affect the sky and grass. Yeah, it does, as you can see. Grass minimally, sky quite a bit, actually. So we could come in here and move these sliders around. Well, that's fine, but what about these circles? Well, these circles are presets, and back in the days when we used film, and actually many of us still use film, I still use film quite often, we would use black and white film, and we would use color filters on our lenses. And the color filters just kind of altered the wavelengths of light that were allowed to go through to that black and white film, and it would affect the final outcome of our print, or our negative, in a specific way. This white is neutral, so when I click on that, everything's straight in the middle. And one filter that I used to love to use in black and white photography for landscapes was a red filter. And if I click on the red, you'll notice it gets a little more drama to it. And you can see the reds turned up, yellows turned up, green, cyan, and blues are down, and magenta is up. And that kind of simulates what would have happened if I was shooting a film camera and I had a red filter on that camera and I was using black and white film. Um, another one that I used to like to use a lot was yellow for landscapes. Yellow often gave you a more balanced look. It, it kind of darkened the sky a bit and it brightened up the grasses as well. So those presets often will help you get in the neighborhood of where you need to be. Then you could come in and readjust. Let's say you want the sky a little darker. So you could pull that down and the blue down and make the sky a little darker. So I used the yellow preset and I pulled sky down, you know, something like that. So that gives you a lot of control over all these different tonal values of the colors in the image. Now, one cool thing about the black and white conversion filter is beyond these sliders here. So I'm going to reset it and go back as though we just opened the black and white conversion filter is below those sliders, there's a number of sliders that affect the tonal values of the image. We have exposure contrast, kind of grouped together, highlight shadows, and whites, blacks, all kind of grouped in their little groups. So 
what many of us often do and what I often do is I don't go to the colors right away or any of these presets right away is I'll adjust the tonal values of my image. So in this case, I would probably bring highlights down. I would open up shadows. I would then bring whites up a little bit, blacks down a little bit. And then below that, we have clarity and details. Kind of give your image that pop. So you could add a little clarity uh, to the image. Now details, you notice clarity was at zero. So we only could add clarity to the image. Details is at zero. So we could bring details down and kind of give your image that kind of ethereal look. Or you could bring details up and start adding some detail, kind of adding sharpness to it. I would warn you, though, to be very careful with the detail slider. If you go too high, you start getting that kind of HDR look, which nobody really likes. So you could do that as well. And then you could add those. So. The only other really thing I should tell you about as far as the black and white conversion filter is this other tab, saturation. Often, we like to do a selective color. So in this case, let's say I want blue in the sky. I would take saturation. You notice, first of all, all, the sliders are at zero. If I take saturation to the right, the blue saturation slider to the right, I'm adding the blue back. Uh, similarly, I could go to green and I could move that to the right and I'm adding the green back to the grass, but you could see the sky and the building pretty much are still monochrome. So you could do selective color with that tab very easily. Now, I mentioned that I'm going to show you my workflow, what I do, and hopefully that will give you better insight on how you could incorporate the black and white conversion filter into your workflow. Normally, I don't use this first, although I do use it early in my workflow. What I do what I like to do, especially if I'm kind of in a hurry, I'm not going to be spending all day processing this image, I would use an Accent AI filter first. Um, I think this is one of the greatest filters ever invented. <laughs> so I would take that and turn that boost all the way up. I may come back in and readjust that later, but I'll turn that up. And that kind of really automatically adjusted the tonal values of my image and some of the contrast of the image and gave me a pretty cool looking image. Then I would add that black and white conversion filter after that. Now, of course, it immediately turned the image into a monochrome image. Now I'll close the filters catalog down to give us more room. Then what I would usually do is I would come in and check these filters or these presets first to see what looks um, they're giving me. And I think overall and then I could reset it by clicking on this white one which is neutral if I want to reset it but I kind of like that yellow one right out of the bat uh, right out of the box I should say that looks pretty cool right there now I kind of like my skies to be dramatic it's kind of my style so I would pull blue down and maybe mess with cyan a little bit too so I'd bring those down a little bit um, I I think that looks pretty good right there then I could still come in, and even though the Accent AI filter adjusted the tonal values of the image, I could then really add to it with the tone sliders here, these tonal sliders here. So, like I could just kind of move these back and forth a little bit and watch the image and see what, um, what it does until I get it to my liking. I kind of like that. Now again, the Accent AI filter did add some contrast and clarity and probably some sharpness too to the image. But I could come in here and I could move these as well. And again, if I wanted to give it that ethereal look, I could move details to the left. Usually I don't mess with the detail slider. I usually leave it right at zero and I'll just move clarity up. So as I look at it, um, it looks like my shadows got a little dark. So I'd open those up a little more. And then I would say that is done. And that is how I go about using the black and white conversion filter. And you can see, even with my talking, it took just like a minute or two. And even if I wasn't, if I wasn't talking, wasn't doing a video, I could do this conversion in, in probably 30 seconds. So that's how fast you could really get in and out of a Luminar 2018 um, and then go out and take some more pictures. 
So that's it for this video. I hope that helps you better utilize the black and white conversion filter and incorporate it into your workflow in a way that works for you. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.